from 5620 Crawford Street in Harahan, welcome to the Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Catholic League Football. Eric Ritchie, pleased to be joined on show number one with Rummel head coach Jay Roth. Coach, welcome to the program. We closed last season's show out with you. We figured we might as well let the defending state champs two times start us off this season. Well, glad to be here, Eric. Thank you very much as we're starting our third week of prep football. It's outstanding. And again, we're at a baseball and softball 23,000 square foot indoor facility. They're open year round. We're going to be doing our show, Coach, from here all season long. We're very excited. We're going to talk more about the facility in just a moment. But let's start talking about those Rummel Raiders who, as you said, uh, working on week three and working on a couple of wins back to back, beating up River Parish teams in the first week, a 39 nothing shutout against East St. John, then a triple overtime win over Hanville two big wins for Rumble. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say beating up on them. It was, uh, you know, two highly ranked teams, and I know they're both going to do well down the road. Uh, it was good to open up with a convincing win in East St. John. I, I couldn't imagine that the score would have ended that way. But I know Coach Banco rebounded with a big win last week over Scotlandville, so they, they got it together. And then playing, the, I, I consider it a whole new Hornville program, you know, with Coach Salt going over there. Last week and, go, and going into a great atmosphere. That was it was definitely like Hornville used to be, and I enjoyed playing there. It was really nice, and I was glad to get out of there with a win. Do you talk about being a two-time defending state champion? How do you approach that with this team? Well, I talk about it in the sense that everybody else is talking about it. So whoever we go play is talking about it. Not necessarily us saying we're a two-time defending state champion, but that's how people see us. And so you know everybody's going to give us their best game, I believe. Well, I don't know if I need to get Phil Greco on line one right now. Talk about this schedule. You just played, as we just talked about, two very talented River Parish teams this week at Cadiana. Then you have Catholic and Dutchtown on the road. Who made this schedule, Coach? This is brutal non-conference. Well, I did, and it's only because I would have had four or five open dates. I mean, when we went to schedule two years ago, there were a lot of teams sitting around didn't have games, open dates. Teams like Acadiana, Dutchtown, Catholic. So what do you do? You play seven, eight games, or you go ahead and schedule them. And I think that's what we all decided to do is to play each other. And, uh, you know, I do enjoy the competition. Uh, it's much better than going into a game where you know the opponent is going to be uh, overmatched. I do enjoy the competition, and I enjoy coaching against people who have been in the game for a long time. We're about to show highlights of your victory in triple overtime over Hanville, but let me just get your comments now. Just a few days removed, and you alluded to the fact the atmosphere at Hanville's Tiger Stadium was just perfect. It was what high school football is all about. And you guys went to the locker at half, trailing 17 to 10, but you came right back. A couple early touchdowns in the third quarter. What did you say at halftime? What adjustments did you make? And, and just your thoughts overall on the outcome of that football game. Well, I thought being down 17, 10 and a half, I said, guys, it's no big deal. We've been down before. But we're down because we fumbled. We turned the ball over. We had a field goal block, and they returned a punt. I mean, we're, you know, I, I, they're good and they're talented, but we kind of helped them along. I said, we're much better than what we showed, and we went back up by seven. They tied it late in the game, and then the ebb and flow was unbelievable the last you know, five minutes in overtime, too. And talk about, uh, I guess, before we, we go to the highlights, Brandon Phillips, a guy that you put in the uh, kind of the wildcat formation, a guy that plays defense for you as well. He gets hurt on that first possession, was down in pain. Was, that, was he cramping up or what? Because he eventually comes back to score the game-winning touchdown. You know, I don't know if people remember, but Brandon Phillips was a tailback on our 2012 state championship team as a sophomore. Okay. But we needed him at safety. He's done great there. And then this year with Israel Tucker being lost for the season, our starting tailback, Brandon's had to step up. And... Thank you know, thank God we have him because he's a true leader, a good player. And, you know, when it comes to five year football, not many people go both ways, and we have two of them right now doing it because of injuries, and Brandon's one of them. You know by now that Rummel went two and zero and won over Hanville, 37-31. We'll go to break with Coach Roth here from the Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy in Harahan. And as we do so, highlights now of a triple overtime thriller. What a night for football at Hanville's Tiger Stadium. Visiting two-time defending state champs Rummel, facing a Hanville team led by first-year head coach Nick Salta Fromaggio, who after a perfect season and state championship last year at East Jefferson, had a 16-game win streak heading into this one. How fired up were the Tigers? Up 17-10 late first half, and watch the reaction after the missed field goal attempt. This Anvil team, fresh off a 35-14 win over Salmon in the opener, playing great football. Second half now, and here come the Raiders. 
Chase Bourquet back at the end zone, and there's Brandon Phillips with the 22-yard touchdown. And just like that, this game is tied at 17. After a Hanville fumble, the Raiders capitalized. Three plays later when 4K keeps it himself for an eight-yard touchdown. And with over four minutes left in the third quarter, Rummel now with the lead up 24-17. Hanville's ensuing drive would wind up in the end zone. That's Drew Dunn powering in from point-blank range on the first play of the fourth quarter. We're tied at 24. Tigers now with the momentum, and Mike Neal moving the offense down the field. A couple of quick strikes to Brandon Singleton, and with 34 seconds left to play, Hanville is in field goal range. Freshman Matthew Boyer with the honors, but his kick is blocked, and this game is headed to overtime, tied at 24. Hanville wins the important toss. They elect for Rummel to go on offense first. Three running plays left them short, then the field goal attempt is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Hanville with the chance to win, but the Rummel defense forces the fumble, and this one's going to double overtime. Very first play, Tigers wasting no time. It's Neal rolling, finding, and connecting. Singleton with the touchdown reception, and now it's Hanville up 31-24 after Boyer's extra point is true. It took Rummel three downs to move to the two. On fourth down, do or die, and Phillips says do. Two yard touchdown would stand after the face mask penalty was called on the Tigers. Important extra point from Justin Moraine, and that is good. And off to a third overtime we go. Hanville on offense first. On fourth down, missing a golden opportunity when the pass is dropped in the end zone so now it's Rummel's chance. This time, no missed opportunities. It's Phillips racing into the end zone, and the Raiders pull off the dramatic win at Tiger Stadium again. 37-31 in triple overtime, the final. Hi, at Tachi Insurance, we can do it all, not just life, health, and employee benefits, but now we've expanded our product portfolio to include all commercial lines of insurance. At Tachi Insurance, we can truly be your one-stop shop for all your insurance needs. At Tachi Insurance, you get personalized service from Natalie and Kelsey Tachi. Welcome back to Catholic League Football. We're here at the Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy, 5620 Crawford Street in Harahan, offering two full state-of-the-art turf playing fields, 16 batting cages, and three clay baseball pitching mounds. Welcome back. Eric Ritchie alongside Rummel head coach Jay Roth, entering year number 20 as the head coach, year number 28 overall, I guess, with the Raiders now. Does it feel like you've been the head coach for two decades? No. No, it just seems like yesterday I was 32 years old, my first year in the job, our time has flown by. Let's talk a little bit about your next opponent, Acadiana. Uh, obviously a, a Rams team that you just talked about in the last segment, lost to a good team from Alabama last week, but they didn't do too much losing last year. I, I saw them in person demolish a very talented Destrehan team, but then they scored like 77 points in the 5A championship, championship game. championship yeah. game. Set all kind of records. Yeah. They're a very intimidating football team, and the thing is, until you see them in person, you don't even know how intimidating they are until you see them in person. Film doesn't do them justice. This is our fourth time playing them. And uh, I really respect Ted Davidson, the head coach in their program. I mean, they are a football program. They've got two or three state championships. And, uh, and he'll play anybody anywhere. That game, of course, is Saturday night, and it really is an intriguing matchup for high school fans around the state because, obviously, it's the select championship team against the non-select, the 5A state champ. So it's kind of everybody's picked, you know, the best of the best. It is, and we kind of knew that when we scheduled. Well, we both didn't know we'd win state champions last year, but we knew that we wouldn't be able to play each other in the playoffs again because we've always met in the playoffs before last year. Um, you know, it's a shame, though, because I don't look at Acadiana as being 
a select and non-select because he has never once complained or right. griped about the system. He just shows up and plays. Let's talk about this select Division One. You got some company this year. Four more teams added to the party along with Curtis, Evangel, St. Thomas More, and Turlings Catholic. What's your opinion on getting some company in your bracket now in the playoffs? Well, I think it gives all the teams an extra week of playing or not as many buys. I know one thing, it doesn't give everybody a break, though, because, I mean, everybody's getting in already. It's week three, everybody's getting in, 12 teams, whatever. So wherever the number 12 seed is, and if they play the number one seed, it's not going to be your typical 1-12 and matchup, I promise, because from top to bottom, it's about as good as it gets. This show is all about the Catholic League, and obviously there was a shakeup at two of your competitors this year with the at the top, uh, Holy Cross, Eric Roboto, now the head coach, and a Jesuit, Mark Sanji. What's your take on, on a couple of guys that you know for years now becoming head coaches in their own program? Well, you know, they, they, it makes me smile because I guess I'm one of the older guys now in the league. I am the older guy, and, and you know, I coached with Mark at Shaw. Mark hired me as an offensive coordinator. He was head coach at Jesuit. And I enjoyed my four or five years coaching with Mark. It just brings a smile to my face. And, uh, you know, competing against him when he coached with Brother Martin Jesuit. And then Eric Roboto was on my staff at Rommel for the first two or three years I was there. And uh, I got all the respect in the world for Eric. He's a hard worker. He's a do a great job. So um, I, I enjoy competing against guys that you know. Yeah, gotcha. It just makes it, makes it that much better. That's awesome. I guess final question, open mic. You look in that camera right there, Coach, and you just tell people what you want them to know about this year's Rumble Raiders. Well, you know, come out and see us. I mean, I think every game we play is going to be a big game in somebody's schedule. Uh, and, and I think this Saturday is no different. On a Saturday night, you know, it's a shame uh, LSU and Mississippi State we're going to head-to-head -head against them, but I think we'll draw a few people to our game this week. It's good football. The kids play hard. It's, it, it represents Jefferson Parish. It represents the Roma community, so come check us out. We're wishing you the best and certainly appreciate your time here. And we're not done with Rommel football, but we'll say goodbye to you, Coach. Good luck to you, and thanks, as always, for being a part of the show. Eric, as always, you're doing a great job with CatholicLeague.com. Appreciate it. Let's take a break here, but, and as we do so, it's a time to check in with our Catholic League Player of the Week. We're back with Rummel Defensive Coordinator Eddie Jackillard after this. The nominees for the Buckwalder Insurance Catholic League Player of the Week. Holy Cross wide receiver Michael Chigvu. Six receptions, 117 yards, and a touchdown in the Tigers' 34-27 win over Sulphur. Jesuit wide receiver Kalijah Lipscomb. Six receptions, 121 yards, and a pair of touchdowns in the Blue Jays' 49-22 win over St. Paul's. Shaw running back Trey Regis. Only six carries, but 137 yards and three touchdowns in the Eagles' 60-6 dismantling of Fisher. Rummel running back slash safety Brandon Phillips, who rushed for a couple of touchdowns both in overtime, also had a touchdown reception and played stellar defense for Rummel, who beat Hanville in triple overtime. And Brother Martin running back Jared West had 26 carries for 70 yards and a touchdown on the ground, also had a touchdown reception in the Crusaders' 33-24 win over John Eric, our Buckwalder Insurance Player of the Week, after this. The Buckwalder Insurance Group has been servicing clients for over 20 years. Our Kenner office just off Williams on 20th Street is here to handle all of your personal and business needs, whether it's auto, home, life, commercial, or business insurance. The Buckwalder Insurance Group is here to help you prepare a strategy to achieve your financial goals. Also with offices in Booty and Destrahan. Stop by or call to get a quote today. Hi, I'm Kalaja Lipscomb, and I'm the Bulk Walter Insurance Player of the Week. Two touchdowns, um, caught a fade from Trey, it was actually he placed ball, and I, um, I had a, a drag, and my teammates held me out. Actually, I wouldn't have scored on it if my teammates hadn't pushed the pile, and um, that's pretty much what he did, try to make plays. You know, I'm really interested to see what his yards were after the catch. Uh, he carried a lot of folks with him. His uh, desire to get across the goal line is, is high and it's there. And uh, we, we like that a lot, of course. But he, uh, he, he's got a great mentality to him. Uh, again, it goes back to his work ethic, and we're thrilled about that. I try to put as much work as possible, run, run full speed, catch balls, look, look them in, in my hands, and um, just try to get as many yards of the catch as possible, run hard, and um, jump as high as I can and get balls.
The Rummel Chappelle Band brings us back from break. Welcome back to Catholic League football. Eric Ritchie, very pleased to be joined by Rummel defensive coordinator Eddie Jacquillard. And coach, what a season it's already been. I mean, you started the season shutting out a very, very athletic and talented East St. John team. That had to be a, just a wonderful way for you to start this new look defense. Yeah, it, uh, we were pleased with the, with the effort. Uh, talent all over the field, uh, you know, quarterback, uh, LSU commitment. Uh, it, was, it was it was a real good effort. Uh, we ran to the ball well. It, 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 was, it was good. I was uh, pleasantly surprised, quite honestly, because uh, they, they did have a lot of offensive weapons, and we did a pretty good job, yeah. Up front, when you start to talk about Rummel defense this year, obviously the big names in Briston Gidry, Tyrell Jacobs, those two names stand out. But I know everything with you guys starts up front, doesn't it, on that defensive yes, front? Yes, that, that's, that's, that's where it's won, you know, uh, on both sides of the ball, yes. uh, you know, uh, offensively and defensively. Uh, and if you're sound up front, it certainly uh, uh, helps alleviate some problems behind that. So uh, both, both have been playing well. Uh, Sam Servat, a defensive end, uh, has been playing well for us, and uh, it, it's 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 been it's been good so far, you know. And uh, we just need to keep it rolling. Let me ask you, as a defensive coordinator, how do you approach the fact that you guys have won two state championships in a row, and and you did so, uh, you know, two years ago, holding Barb, an unbelievable offensive team, to 14 points. You, you beat Bird last year as well. You get some key turnovers in that game. How do you approach that with your defensive players, Coach? Well, you know, I, I don't know if, if it, each year it changes. Uh, mm -hmm. The chemistry of the defense changes. You know, you lose kids. But uh, the bottom line, and I, th I think it's on both sides of the ball, it's, 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 it's tradition. And, you know, it's, it's about doing the little things. It's about running to the football. It's about being physical, about knowing what you're doing. So, you know, it, uh, each year it's a, it's a different thing. Coach Jacquillard has been the defensive coordinator since 02. He's been coaching at Rummel for 24 years, coaching overall for 34 years. You bring up Acadiana, and when you think those those wrecking Rams, you never know who has the ball, the quarterback with the triple option. He's, he's got it. Is it a dive? Is it a... How do you defend that? Well, we're, we're trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if if you if you happen to see last year's game, you, you understand we're trying to figure it out. It's um, you know we got a little preview last week with Hornville running an option attack, but it's a different kind of option. It's a, got a few more moving parts in it. It's a little more finesse. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's it's you can't simulate this at practice. That's that's one thing. You know, we tell the kids what's going to happen. Uh, you can't simulate it. Uh, it's their offensive line is fabulous. Uh, the, the backs are fabulous. Uh, we have a lot of respect for them. We're uh, I think we play them four times. I think we're three and one against them. Yep. When you think you get close, we thought we were close because we beat them a few years ago, and then lo and behold, uh, it didn't fare well for us <laughs> the 40, last year. But, Forty-two twenty-eight was the final yeah, last year. Yeah. I didn't want to bring it up, but no, for those no. that didn't know the final no. score last year, that's what it was. But right. again, an Acadiana team coming off a loss, coach. Well, they came off a loss last year. That's they right. lost to Neville. That's right. So uh, I don't think that really bothers them too much. Uh, they're going to just regroup and get after it. It might, might make them a little more. Uh, more wrecking. <laughs> yes, a little more wrecking the Rams. It, exactly. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge as a coach. I have a lot of respect for Coach Davidson. He's, the, uh, you know, the head coach and offensive line coach also. And I just have tremendous respect for, for them and what they do. And it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a um, challenge. It's, it's something you don't see, the option football, you know, more people are getting away from it. We're actually fortunate that we did see a little bit of it last week, although it'd be a little bit different. But uh, it's a challenge, you know, and, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully that uh, we can uh, change what happened last year and, and, and make it a little more respectable. Final question for you, Coach. If you would, just tell people what you would like them to know about Rummel's defense, your coaching philosophy, and, and, and what it's all about on your side of the ball. Well, you know, these are the things we preach, and I, I've said this before. Uh, we we, we want to be a focused defense, and we talk about focus being like knowing what you're doing, know your responsibilities, so forth and so on. So that's, that's part of it, and that's kind of our philosophy. Uh, we want to play fast, and by fast, I mean running to the football. Uh, if... if, if it's if we do anything, if we do anything, it's it's that it's it's trying to get um, eleven players to the ball, mm -hmm. um, 
and then we obviously want to play physical because that's what it is. And and we tell the kids if if, if you play focused, you play fast, and you play physical, you probably had a lot of fun, you know, on most occasions. Well, it's a lot of fun covering you guys and watching you on the sidelines, focused, and that's what you are on the sidelines <laughs> doing your thing. Thanks so much for being with Thank us. You. Best of Always luck a with the Katie Anna. All right. It. Let's take a break now, and before we do so, as we go to break, let's look at some highlights from around the Catholic League this past week. Of course, a couple of games on Saturday. We've got highlights of both, Brother Martin and St. Aug. A little afternoon delight for Brother Martin against John Arad on Saturday, and the Crusaders jumping on top. Jake Brogy finds Jeremy Singleton, and Brother Martin led 7-2. Another touchdown pass made it 14-2. This time, Brogy connecting to Jared West out of the backfield and West doing the rest. John Errett makes a strong comeback, but this 22-yard run by Bruce Jordan Swilling would seal it. Brother Martin is now 2-0 after defeating John Errett 33-24. Well, in the fourth quarter, we was real close, so we just had to do what we had to do, and we had to score very quick because the time was running. It was like, I think, under two minutes, so we just had to do it. Later on Saturday, it was St. Aug taking on Carr. Always a competitive game. This one no different. Late first quarter, sophomore quarterback Justice McCoy going to take it himself for the touchdown. Carr would jump out top 12 to 6, but the defense from St. Aug would capitalize on the fumble in the end zone, and that's Yusuf Scipio. He's going to recover. That's a touchdown. And here come the Purple Knights. Carr would again take a lead, and again, St. Aug would tie it, this time through the air. McCoy looking for Jamal Pettigrew. The ball's tipped, but Pettigrew hangs on. 10-yard touchdown, tying this game at 19 in the third quarter, but Carr would get another touchdown. More turnovers really plagued St. Aug in this one. The final, Carr wins it 25-19. to Well, you know, they're resilient, but, you know, uh, we're not resilient enough. You know, so uh, um, we, we still got a, we still a work in progress, and, we, you know, we got to get better next week. Welcome back to Catholic League Football. We're here with Blake Benedetto. He's basically the director of operations here at Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy. Blake, thanks so much for helping us here and hosting the show. I mean, it's a football show. This is a baseball academy, but it's the Catholic League. I think all the sports kind of intertwine. Absolutely, absolutely. We, uh, during the week is a course of, uh, you know, from three to nine, we're open. We're just, we're packed in here with, with every Catholic school possible. You name it, they're in here. And it's all about hardcore baseball here. I know people come here for a reason. It's not just to mess around or ha you know hang out. It's to play baseball and learn learn the game. Absolutely. We're, what our main goal here is is for the serious developed athlete. We don't want to. We don't do birthday parties here. And there's no celebrations. No soccer. Strictly baseball and softball. Individual training. Tell us a little bit more about how we can find it. If, if somebody's a, a baseball fan, wants to work out here, how do they get in touch with you guys to, to come out here and actually actually get their son or, or, or daughter to work out here, baseball or softball? Right. Uh, there's a few ways you can reach us. Uh, obviously, our, our Facebook is one of them, Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy. Uh, you can try our website. It's louisianabsa.com or give us a phone call here at 504-733-8660. Blake, we appreciate it. We're going to be here for the next 10 weeks. We're going to break down even the machine behind us. Look, that's, that's Fenway Park. It's showing where you hit the ball. That's pretty cool, huh? Good stuff. Well, listen, we appreciate it. We're going to talk to Blake throughout the year here at Louisiana Baseball Sports Softball Academy. But as we do each and every Catholic League football show, we close with the photo finish. And we're very honored today to have from Rummel, Mr. Bill Authors, who all of the pictures from NOLACatholicLeague.com, they come from Mr. Bill Authors, who's been here at Rummel for 50 years. First of all, thanks for all that you do for our site. Thanks for the pictures. Welcome to the show. How did you get started with photography? I got started because of my barber, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, gave me a camera and asked me to learn how to use it and teach him. And then when I taught him, he took the camera back. He, he took the camera back. Well, you've certainly improved throughout the years. You do a great job with the, with the pictures themselves. When you're on the football field, um, on those sidelines with the Rummel Raiders, what's going through your mind? Because I know you haven't missed many football games in the last 50 years. I've missed eight. Total. In 50 years, yeah. Unbelievable. What's going through your mind? Uh, what are you looking for? What makes a good picture? You try to learn the game, anticipate the play. If you're in the right position, when the play occurs, you usually get the picture. 
trust me, folks, he usually does get the picture. We've got plenty of evidence that we've shown on our website to prove that. Used to be the basketball coach. He's taught typewriting classes. But your brother played basketball at Tulane and played in the NBA. He played in the NBA, yeah. He played for the Milwaukee Bucks. With Lou Alcindor? He roomed with him. Did he? What, in, give in, us rookie, a good story. in rookie camp. Give us a, what did he say about the now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? He said that when they went into their room for the first time, they roomed each other alphabetically. Arthur's and Alcindor. Alcindor and Arthur's. That's right. And they had to get a second bed to put and make a T so his feet would fit. <laughs> and that's how his career started. It's a football show at a baseball establishment, and we're talking basketball. you got to love the Catholic League, and I know you certainly do. Oh, yeah. And it has been a wonderful ride for 50 years, and you just sure keep, and you keep, keep showing up every Friday, Thursday, or Saturday, and you, you're there for, for Rummel football. I hope to be there for a while. Well, we and hope I, so, too. And I want to thank you for all you're trying to do for the Catholic League. Well, I certainly appreciate it. We're having a great time thanks to guys like you that's making it very special. Thank you, Eric. It's time to close with a photo finish from pictures from this man right here, Bill Authors. For all of us here at the Louisiana Baseball Sports Academy, for Coach Roth and Coach Jacquillard, I'm Eric Ritchie. Thanks for watching. It's a photo finish from this past week's Rummel-Hanville game. Good night, everyone.